Hey guys, welcome back. It's Matt here, back again with another one to share video. First of all, I would like to ask you if you could subscribe, keep up to date with all the videos we post because they will definitely come in handy. Today's video topic, we're gonna to be taking a look at Mac OS Big Sur. This is quite a big step in terms of Mac operating system in quite some time, and its final release is around next month, so I'm really excited for that. Without any further ado, let's jump straight into the video. So the first thing I want to talk about is the UI changes because this hits you like a brick wall as soon as you turn on the laptop or your computer, it's going to be right there from pretty much the login screen all the way through to just using it on a daily basis, you're going to see some graphical changes. And so I think it's definitely worth mentioning. So the biggest one is definitely the icons. It's a matter of personal taste. I did find it a little bit strange at first because they're definitely the same icons almost as on the iPhone, but they did tweak some of them. So some of them are the same, some of them aren't, which, is, which I thought was just kind of strange. Why not just keep them all sort of consistent? They do still have that sort of distinction between the Mac ones though. That's just personal preference, whether you like the new icons or not. If you don't like them, there is ways around changing them, but I guess you'll just kind of adapt and get used to them over time. The actual dock where all the app icons sit is actually changed as well, so that looks a bit more like the iPad OS one. It's just a little bit different, more minimal and sleek, and yeah, kind of reminds me of iOS. Now another feature is coming across, which is the widgets. Now, Mac did used to have widgets before, but they weren't very useful and they were kind of clunky, and they sort of looked a bit old school, so I never really used them personally, but I'm really hoping there'll be some third-party widgets coming out that maybe could be for Spotify or some of the applications I use on my Mac, that would be really nice and handy. So far we have several stock widgets which are accessible in the side panel, but you can customize the order and there's weather widgets, calendar widgets, calculator, there's a bunch of stuff similar to what you can find on iPad OS, but it's just sort of blown up a bit bigger for the Mac. You have a small, medium and large version of pretty much every widget. And yeah, I kind of like it. It does sort of scream iPad OS a bit, so it's kind of just like iPad OS, but on a bigger screen with a mouse. It's kind of strange. It feels very touchscreen oriented throughout the whole operating system, I think you'll find, especially just looking at it. It does look very sort of touchscreen. So hopefully, fingers crossed, Apple are going to bring out a touchscreen MacBook or iMac. That would be pretty cool. Let me know what you think about that down below. But talking about the actual sidebar menu, the notifications have changed a little bit as well. When you do get spammed from various apps like I do for Chrome, notifications are always coming in just for YouTube and Gmail and a bunch of other things. And so now it actually goes ahead and groups them together. So if someone spams you on Twitter, you don't actually go ahead and get 20 notifications. You just get one notification that's grouped and you can go ahead and expand that or you can simply collapse it. So that's really nice and appreciated because you don't get a bunch of clutter on your home screen. The next thing I want to discuss is about the actual applications baked into macOS. So Apple have upgraded quite a lot of their stock apps and so I'm going to go through some of the changes in the bigger apps. Most of them are just performance but a few of them are graphical and again you're going to see a trend about sort of the iPad OS look coming across onto macOS because that's kind of what they've done with all these new applications. So the first app I want to discuss is one that Apple's really trying to push in everyone's faces, and I'm presuming that's due to competition from Chrome. They're trying to push Safari into every Mac user's face. So they've definitely done some overhauls and tried to improve it a bunch. One of the things that really did stick out to me was they're making it a lot easier for third-party extensions from, say, Chrome or Firefox to move over onto Safari. And overall, it's going to make it easier for developers to make that happen. But the overall design has just changed a little bit. It's more minimal. You also have a personal page with recommendations and sort of your bookmarks and all of your information like news and things. They will all be on your personal page. And you can also go ahead and add a background. That was also, for some reason, really over-exaggerated in the keynote. I personally like it. They did state that it's about 50% faster than Chrome at loading web pages. They also stated it's more efficient, so if you do use Safari, you're gonna get better battery life. Another app that did change was Mail. Mail's definitely copied the iPad Mail app, and I actually really do like that. It's more minimal. Overall, the last Mail app was just really, really cluttered, and I really didn't like it too much. I found that when I actually viewed emails and deleted them and sorted them on my iPad or my phone, it didn't go ahead and carry across to my Mac, and so everything was still there that I deleted for some reason, and so that I found that really frustrating. So I just never ended up using it. I always just used Gmail instead, and I do have a Gmail account, so maybe there was some sort of syncing issue that was happening there. 
but the icon has changed as well, like I mentioned earlier. And the overall look is nice, I dig it. I personally think it's quite an upgrade, honestly, and it's really long overdue. Another app that he did change is the Messages app. They really were trying to push this as well. There are some new features, like you can go ahead and pin conversations to sort of like this bubble. So you can pin them at the top so you don't have to scroll through all your contacts because you've got so many people to message, right? You can also send inline replies so you can have like mini conversations inside of a chat so you don't have to like clutter it with a bunch of things going on. And finally, it has similar functionality to most other social apps out there, which basically means you can go ahead and tag people. So you can use the at symbol and you can tag a person. And if people have muted the chat, and you mention them, it will actually go ahead and notify them. So that's really cool. Uh, if, you're, if they're not paying attention to the chat and you want to get their attention, you can go ahead and tag them. Maps has also changed. Again, it just feels kind of like ported over from iPad OS. There is something new though. They are now expanding the overall look around. So that's kind of like Apple's version of Street View. They're bringing that to more countries, starting with the UK, which is really nice to see. I don't really use maps too much, but sometimes I like to look around at the location just to get myself familiar with it before I actually go. Obviously, I don't use it for like GPS or anything like that. So it's not much of a big deal, but it is nice to see. And the last thing I do want to go over is just the overall settings of macOS. So starting with the status bar at the top, things seem a lot more spaced out, which is kind of unusual. It's kind of like Apple's calling to us to, to tell us they're actually going to head and use touchscreen. The spacing between all these toggles at the top is very unusual, and it's kind of like you're going to touch it with your finger, the amount of space they've left between it, which is really odd. And it does just feel overall strange using Big Sur with a mouse. So again, hopefully they bring out like a touchscreen version. I, I can't really see why else they would do this, especially when it comes to the control center. So if you don't want all of those toggles cluttering your status bar at the top there, you can move them all into control center. You have a little bit of customization as to what settings you have in there. So you can put everything in there, access all of your different toggles all at the same time within the same menu, which is really nice. And it does carry across again from the iPad has that same look as Control Center on the iPad, which is just really nice to see. And overall, just all the devices Apple make seem to be sort of closing in closer together and sort of becoming the one device almost. So it's really interesting to see where this goes in the future. Maybe Mac and iPad will just fuse together into one. Kind of seems like it's going that way, but we'll have to wait and see. Diving in the settings app, there's a couple of new things in here. My favorite one is the battery usage. So this actually goes ahead and tells you how much screen on time you've used, which applications are using most power. And it does tell you quite a lot of information that's very, very helpful. It tells you your battery health. And there's also an option which actually goes ahead and kills your MacBook before it's really dead. So that actually allows you to get more battery cycles. So it allows your battery to last longer, which is really nice. So if you do want that, you can go ahead and tick it. You also have some new wallpapers and I'm sure if you dive in deeper, you'll find some more things to do with security and all that. But really I'm just talking about my experience and really how it is to use. And yeah, I really do like it. One of my favorite things actually is when you turn on the MacBook or your iMac, it does that original chime like on the old MacBook. So it's nice to see that back. If you don't want it though, you can disable it, but I think it's pretty cool. So nice to see that sort of original uh, old design fused with the new sort of iPad OS design. I really am digging it, I'm not gonna lie. So in terms of my overall opinion, if I was to stand back and think about all the past OSs that Mac has had, I would say, yeah, this is obviously the best one because it's the newest one, it's got the newest features, it's got the best security. But in terms of actually using it, I'd say it does feel like an iPad a bit, but then you also do have the power and the applications available for Mac. So I really like it. I'm excited to see the silicon chips coming out, just to see the iPad OS apps running on Mac. That would be really cool. And especially if they brought out a touchscreen device, maybe they'll just fuse together like I mentioned, but who knows, we'll really just have to wait and see. Anyway guys, that is pretty much it. I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to comment, rate, and subscribe. I'll see you guys later.